church. Amen. Amen. It's so good to know that everything moves and that everything moves at the sound of the Lord because the Lord is powerful and the Lord is mighty. Grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied unto you in the name of God the Father and Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, to Dr. Mary and Sister Mary and to the members of the First Baptist Church and to all who love the Lord and have been touched by the Spirit of God. We do greet you on this, the Lord's Day, with Jesus' joy. And uh, we're just so thankful that the Lord has allowed us to be here, that we could share with you on this great anniversary celebration. As was mentioned in the introductory comments, and I do thank my sister for the introduction, that your pastor and I, we crossed paths many, many years ago. And he's remained a loyal and trusted friend over the years. And so I'm just delighted that he invited me to come and share this morning because I do know that he could have asked a whole lot of other preachers. Amen. He could have asked a whole lot of other preachers to come, but uh, somehow the lot fell on me. And so I am just thankful and happy that he's invited me to share this 34th anniversary with him. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. And, and, and we know that all the time he's a mighty good and faithful God. There is a word that we want to share this morning that's going to come out of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 24, and then we'll be ending at verse 28. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 24, and then ending at verse 28. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want to take us back up to particularly to that 26 verse. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. These times that have been graciously given unto me, I'm going to be preaching from the subject, He's in the middle of it. He's in the middle of it. Let's pray. Father, it is in the strength and power of the only name that matters, which is Jesus the Christ, that we now come in your presence on this a day that you have graciously given unto us so that we might celebrate your goodness and your grace. We pray now that in the preaching of the gospel that your word might meet us where we are. Please don't leave us there. But now we pray that you might usher us to where we need to be. We know, Father, that the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but your word will last forever. I've studied of your word, but now I need your power. Consider your goodness, but now I do stand in need of your anointing. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. For it is in the blessed and powerful name of Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. He's in the middle of it. There are 
many things that uh, we need in life, and uh, I believe that we would all say and agree that we need food and clothing and shelter. And that is so very true that we need food and clothing and we also need shelter. But in addition to those tangible things, we also need some intangible things. That not only do we need what we can see oftentimes, but we also need what we can not see. We need not only the visible things of life, but the truth of the matter is that we also need the invisible things as well. And one of the things that I've come to the conclusion that we need in life is that we need harmony. We need a sense of oneness and we need a sense of togetherness. In other words, we need a sense of peace. I can't begin to say the number of times I've heard people say to me that, uh, Brother Pastor, the one thing I need in my life, I don't need more money, I don't need more houses, I don't need more land, but I just need peace. I don't need a better house in which to live, and I don't need better clothes to wear, but I just need peace in my life. And I believe that all of us have as a basic need a sense of harmony that there might be oneness between us and our God, oneness with other people, and also oneness within ourselves. I believe the psalmist said it best when he said, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so as we travel through life, I believe that all of us need harmony. We need a sense of peace. But the reality is that there's always more that connects us than there is that divides us. There is more that we share in common than we share that is so much unalike. And so for that reason, I believe that all of us desire harmony in our lives. There's a story about an evangelist who conducted a revival at a church where God did some wonderful things. The church had a tremendous pastor, and they had done a remarkable job getting ready for the revival meeting. And one night, the evangelist spoke on having the right spirit and being in unity with all the saints. And it was at the conclusion of the service that some people came and they expressed their faith in Christ. And this was because during the previous weeks leading up to the revival, church members had ministered to almost all of them. Some had already accepted Christ at home or at work, but now they were coming to make a public commitment of their faith. But it was then after the service, the pastor said that one of the members had something he wanted to say to the church. The pastor did not know what he wanted to share, but the man told the pastor that it was very important. The man stood before the church in tears and admitted that he had been critical lately concerning the pastor's wife. He didn't like the little sports car that she drove, and he talked to other people about it. The man said that he was now asking God to forgive him, and he also asked the church to forgive him. He then looked at the pastor's wife and said that he wanted the pastor's wife to forgive him. The pastor's wife then stepped out of the aisle and the two embraced. The pastor hugged him and they shook hands as tears flowed from all of the church members. No wonder the church could have a genuine revival because people were getting their hearts right with God. And they were also getting their hearts right with one another. There was unity and there was harmony in the church. And so I believe that what we all stand in need of is a sense of harmony. But it's also true that we also stand in need of hope. We need hope today. If there was ever a time in our land and in our nation wherein we need hope, we need hope right now. For there are those who believe that the world is spinning out of control. Things are somehow worse than they are getting better. That it seems as though we're on the wrong road as opposed to being on the right road. And so therefore, I believe that all of us stand in need of hope. 
the fact that we need to know that there's going to be a brighter day coming. That darkness will not last always, but the sun will shine again. We all need a sense of hope. But then also I've come to the conclusion that we need healing. We need healing, and I don't just mean physical healing. But we need emotional, and we also need spiritual healing as well. All of us have some broken places in our lives, places in which only God can heal. And I'm glad to report this morning that the God we serve is a healer, that he heals us not only on the outside, we serve a God who knows how to heal us on the inside. And so every now and then, we just need to know that there is a bomb in Gilead that can make the wounded whole, that there is a bomb in Gilead that is even for the sin-sick soul. And so I believe that all of us, as we travel through life, that we need healing on occasion. And the good news this morning is that God is somebody who can heal us of all of our sicknesses and of all of our diseases. It is here in this text that I read this morning that we find that the Apostle Paul is reminding the church, that God is a healer. He's reminding the church that God can do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever think or that we can even ask. And basically what Paul is letting the church at Rome know is that God is always in the middle of it. But he wants them to know that the only way that they can receive hope and healing in their lives and even as harmony is that the Spirit of God must be at work. Paul wants them to know that only the power of the Holy Ghost can bring about the change in which they desire. And I want you to know this morning, the good news is that when the Holy Ghost starts moving, that when the Holy Ghost starts blessing, that time cannot stop the blessing of the Holy Ghost. The good news is that the Holy Spirit of God, that he can bless you on a Monday, just as well as he can bless you on a Sunday. That you don't have to wait till you get to church on Sunday morning to have a hallelujah good time. But I want you to know that you can have a holly good time even in your living room. All you got to do is stop and think about the goodness of the Lord and what the Lord has done in your life. And I'm sure that there will become a shout in your heart. And so therefore Paul wants them to understand that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that what the Holy Ghost is able to do is that he cannot be stopped with time. And I believe that there are those of us who we try to put God in a box. And we began to believe that God only blesses us at certain times of the year. But I'm coming to report this morning that we serve a God that can bless us at any time. The Bible said this is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm so glad that the psalmist didn't say Sunday is the day. I'm glad he didn't say Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday is the day. But he's letting us know that every day we get up, open our eyes and behold another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so therefore we must remember that the blessing of the Holy Ghost, that he blesses us and that it is not limited by time. It is also not limited by temperament. In other words, the Holy Ghost can bless us even when folk don't like you. Oh yes, the Holy Ghost can bless you even when folk try to hinder his blessings. The truth of the matter, my brothers and sisters, is that nobody can stop the movement of the Holy Ghost. And I hear folk going around saying that somebody has blocked their blessing. There are folk that go around saying that somebody has gotten in the way of their blessing. But I want you to know that if any man, woman, or child can stop your blessing, what that says is that they got more power than God. And my Bible says that God has all power. And so therefore, even though they may not like you, guess what? God can still bless you in spite of it. They might try to get in your way. They may try to hinder the blessing, but they can't stop the blessing. And therefore, whosoever the Lord wants to bless, guess what? He will bless. 
that whoever the Lord wants to lift up, guess what? The Lord will lift them up. Or whoever the Lord wants to put joy in their lives, the Lord will put joy in their lives. And so therefore, you must remember that the blessings of God, that it cannot be stopped by temperament. Also, we must understand that the blessings of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, that he cannot be stopped by territory. In other words, it doesn't matter where you live. You can't stop the blessings of God. It doesn't matter how much you have that you cannot stop the blessings of God. You might live on the north side, the south side, the east side, the west side, or no side at all. But you can't stop the blessings of God. God's blessings is never limited by territory. You can be on a deserted island. You can be in the belly of a fish. And yet you can still receive the blessings of God. And I want you to know this morning that's good news for all of us. Because it doesn't matter whether or not somebody else knows your address. The important thing is that God knows your address. It doesn't matter where you live. The important thing is that God knows where you live. And so as long as God knows, that's good enough for me. And so therefore, you must understand that God can bless us, and the blessings of God are not limited by territory. Come and go with me again here to Romans chapter 8. For there in Romans chapter 8, the Apostle Paul begins to remind us how it is that God can bring hope and harmony and healing to all of our lives. And he lets us know that it's all by the power of the Holy Ghost. He lets us know that what happens is that when the Holy Ghost starts moving, that the Holy Ghost is someone that cannot be purchased. And I want you to know today that Bill Gates can purchase a whole lot of stuff, but he cannot purchase the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to know that Warren Buffett, that yet he can purchase stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, but he cannot purchase the power of the Holy Ghost. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that the Holy Ghost cannot be purchased. If the Holy Ghost could be purchased, the rich would be rich, and the poor will still be poor. But I want you to know that no matter how much money you have in your bank account, or no matter how much money you don't have in your bank account, you can still have the power of the Holy Ghost. Because all you got to do is yield your body unto that power. And I declare the power of the Holy Ghost will get in your hands. And not only will he get in your hands, he'll get in your feet. Somebody said he got in my hands and I lifted my hands. Got in my feet and my feet got light. Got in my heart and my heart got right. And I want you to know that it's by the power of the Holy Ghost that can't nobody do you like that power. And so therefore the power of the Holy Ghost is someone that cannot be purchased. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that cannot be packaged. You can't package up the power of the Holy Ghost. But every now and then, you've got to let the Holy Ghost have free course. Let him have free reign. I love the way the church of old would talk about him. Church of old would say that he moves from heart to heart. And that he moves from breast to breast. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. And I want you to know this morning that if we could package him, that if we could put them in a package, what we would do is that we would put them in a box and we put them on a shelf and we'll even put them in a cabinet. And whenever we needed some healing in our lives, we would go to the closet and the cabinet and we would pull him out. But I want you to know that you can't package up the Holy Ghost. You might be able to dam up water, but you cannot dam up the Holy Ghost. Because rather the Holy Ghost will move wherever he wants to move. You might come and you might say that I'm not going to let him move in my heart this morning. But guess what? You might say that you're not going to let him move. But if the Holy Ghost wants to move, he's going to move anyhow. You might say that I'm not going to lift up my voice. But guess what? If the power of the Holy Ghost gets hold of you, he'll make you do some stuff that you said you weren't going to do. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. And that was all because of the power of the Holy Ghost. But then also you must understand that the Holy Ghost is marvelous in our lives. And Paul said that the reason the Holy Ghost can do this for us is simply because the Holy Ghost sees everything. 
I'm glad to report this morning that there's nothing that you can keep from the power of the Holy Ghost. He sees your down sitting, but he also sees your uprising. Uh, that's what the psalmist understood when he said, If I ascend into the heaven, God is also there. If I make my bed in hell, that God is also there. If I take the wings of the morning, and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea. God is also there. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. You can hide from some folk, but you can't hide from the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost sees everything. The Holy Ghost knows everything. And therefore, the Holy Ghost sees. So I want you to know this morning, the way in which he blesses us is that he sees everything. But then also the way in which he blesses us is that he searches our hearts. Uh, notice what the Apostle Paul says. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But it is the Spirit that maketh intercession for us. And the truth of the matter is that there are a whole lot of stuff we want. But there's not a whole lot of stuff we need. And what the Holy Ghost does is that he separates out what we need from what we want. He makes up in his own mind that there are certain things in your life that you've been wanting for a long time. But even though you've been wanting that, he said that's not what you need. And then what happens in the midst of all of the movement of the Holy Ghost, that even what we pray for, because the truth is that we pray for a whole lot of stuff that we want, but a whole lot of stuff we've been praying for, that ain't what we need. And so what the Holy Ghost does, that he takes that prayer about something that we want, and then he communicates back to God. And he lets God know, I know they said one thing, but the thing that they said they wanted, they really don't need that. This is what they need. And then the Bible said that he searches the mind of God because God knows everything that we really need. And what God does, that God doesn't give us what we want, but rather God gives us what we need. And God separates it out. God matches up what we need with what God wants us to have. God brings together his want for us with the need that we really have. Let me break this down so you might understand what I'm talking about. Because what God knew is that God knew that we needed salvation. And therefore God wanted us to be saved. And God joined together the want for salvation with our need for salvation. God saw that we needed to be born again. God wanted us to be born again. God joined together his want for us with the need that we had. God wanted us to be righteous, and we needed to be righteous. And God joined together his want for us with our need that we had. God always bring together his want with our need. And therefore, Paul said that God searches the heart so that he might know what we really need. And then God supplies us with our need. Listen to what he says. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us, which groanings which cannot be uttered. But it doesn't stop it there. Because it's not only about seeing and searching, but it's about speaking. For the Holy Ghost must also speak. Because what happens is that there is this conversation that occurs between God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the power of the Holy Ghost. It is a conversation between the celestial and the terrestrial. It is a conversation in between heavenly beings. And because it is a conversation in which God is a partner of, 
Satan can have no part of that. Because it is a conversation that occurs between God himself. Satan cannot interfere with that conversation. And so therefore when they get on board and they start talking with one another, God decides what it is that you really want in your life. And I want you to know that in everything that you've gone through, always remember that he is in the middle of it. If you don't believe that he's in the middle of it, come on and let's go with me. Come on to Moses and Pharaoh. Because God was in the middle of it. If you don't believe that God was in the middle of it, come on with me and see Jonah in the belly of the fish. That God was in the middle of it. If you don't believe that God was still in the middle of it, come on and see Jesus standing before Herod. God was in the middle of it. And even in my own life and in your life, that God has always been in the middle of it. When you were down and couldn't get back up, God was still in the middle of it. When you were sick in your body and you wanted to get well, that my God was still in the middle of it. When you were lost and couldn't find your way, that God was still in the middle of it. When you lost your joy and wanted your joy back, that God was still in the middle of it. And I'm glad what Paul said in the end of this chapter. For in the end of the chapter, Paul said, Nay, we are more than conquerors. What shall separate us from the love of God? What shall keep us from the love of God? He said, Nay, in all of these things, we are more than a conqueror. And why is that? It's because God is in the middle of it. What shall separate me from the love of God? Nothing shall be able to separate me from his love. Not life, not death, not principalities, not powers, not things present, not things to come, not visible, not invisible, nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Oh, nothing shall keep us from him because the truth of the matter, he's in the middle of it. And so I want you to know this morning that whatever you're going through in your life, always remember he hasn't forsaken you. He hasn't forgotten about you. The going might get rough. Mountains might be hard to climb. But God, but God, but God. Somebody said the lily of the valley, but God. Somebody said the bright and morning star, but God. Somebody said my bread when I'm hungry, but God. Somebody said my water in a dry place, but God. God is in the middle of it. And so whatever you do, keep trusting in him. Whatever you do, keep believing in him. Whatever you do, keep your hand in him. And the saints of old, they had it right. When they said, one glad morning. They said, one glad morning. When it's all over. That's because God is in the middle of it. One glad morning, when I've sung my last song, one glad morning, when I prayed my last prayer, one glad morning, when this life is over, I will fly away. That's all because he's in the middle of it. So the day we can leave shouting and praising and giving God thanks, for God has not left us alone, but God is still there. He's our bridge over troubled water, and he's our hope in the midst of a hopeless situation. No matter what happens in this land or country, God is still in charge. No matter that it might get dark, God is still in charge. We're real hopeful 
when President Obama was in the White House. But now with the 45th, we feel as though all hope is gone. But guess what? God is still in the middle of it. God is still in the middle of it. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, and you've been concerned about where you are in life and whether or not you will ever make it over, I want you to know that you will make it. And you'll make it because God is still God. And there is none like him in all of the earth. That he is the keeper of your soul. He's the lifter of your head. He is your hope in the midst of hopeless situations. It's all about God. For he is in the middle of it. You've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. We encourage you on this, the Lord's day, that you might make a decision, and that you might embrace him, you might love him with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength. If you're here, never been baptized, we invite you to come. Once in the church, you left the church, but we kept the light on because we knew that one day, you will need to come on back home. So if you're here, never been baptized, we invite you to come on, receive the Lord as Lord and Savior of your life. The choir singing, if you're here, we invite you to come, we invite you to come. to do. We would like at this time to go to the throne of grace. Pastor and Sister Mari, will you come the center? Brother Chioki and, and Garvey and Sister Jewel, will you join your parents? Yes, yes. Anyone else, please you all just come to the altar. 
that we may engulf our pastor and first lady and part of their family. Brother Chioki is representing the rest of the family. We're just blessed to know that we have a pastor who believes in the power of prayer. of the Holy Ghost. We come thanking you, God, that we still have hope. And we know that you are able to give us peace. For you said so many times in your word that your peace you leave with us. And so, God, we want to have the peace that will cause us to, to live together in harmony, fellowship, and love. God, we want to thank you right now for 34 years of pastor and family standing together on the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, God, that you've been in the middle of it for 34 years, God. We've seen you move and we've felt your power. Father God, reaching back you've been in the middle of it moving forward you've been in the middle of it and by faith you have brought our pastor and his wife and family thus far and we say thank you we thank you God for how pastor and Mrs. Murray have set the example for us to what it means to be a Christian couple we thank you, God, for how they walk together hand in hand, doing your work and your will. Lord, we know that sometimes the road may get rough for them and the going may get tough. But because you are in the middle of it, they often look at one another and then lift their eyes into the hills from which cometh their help because they realize that all of their help come from you and you alone. You are the one who made the heavens and the earth. And so God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, that they not only minister to us and lead us with pastoral care, but they minister beyond these walls. They minister locally, globally, and internationally. God, they have a heart for missions. They care with compassion, dear God. And they have taught us what it means to be a missional church. They have taught us, God, to have hope and have faith. They've taught us, God, how to love, and not only to love one another, but to love others unconditionally. Thank you, God. Thank you for this man who have stood in the pulpit who have preached many sermons to us for 34 years, who have buried our dead, God, who had married us and been there when our babies and grandbabies were born and have dedicated them unto you, Lord. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that 
You will hear our prayer for our pastor. Yes. But God, I, I would be amiss if I didn't ask you to hear our prayer like the pastor would for, for those who are hurting, for those who are lost. I pray, God, for those in Texas, Lord. I pray for those in the Gulf Coast and the communities. I pray, God, that you will use us to help them to not only to survive, but to thrive, God. And God, we just, we just want you to know, Lord, that we stand with our hearts and our hands open to, to do whatever it is that's necessary to bring about relief. And then, God, we pray for those who are sick. We've called out some names. You know their conditions. You know what they've been through. Heal their bodies, God. Make them whole and well once again. Then, God, we pray for those among us who are bereaved, who have lost loved ones. Some have been a while ago and some have been recently. But the pain is still real. And the pain is still there. But, God, each and every day is a new day. And every new morning, you bring about new blessings. You bring about new mercies. And we say thank you, God. Now, God, as we begin to journey into the 25th, the 35th year, we pray that you would make First Baptist Church a stronger church. A church, oh God, who stands on your word even more than ever before. A church, oh God, that knows that we can only make it by faith. Help our faith to look to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. God, we ask now in the name of Jesus that all of us will embrace Pastor Mari and Sister Amanda and the family with, with love. That we will embrace them with our prayers, dear God. The God, we can't say anything good about our pastor and his first lady. We ought not say anything at all. And so we ask that those things that we've done that's not pleasing in your sight and the words that we've used, that you will forgive us and put us on another track as we begin another year. Thank you for Pastor Waller and the word that put you forth, God. But we know there is power in the Holy Ghost. And can't nobody do us like Jesus. For God is truly in the middle of our lives. Hear our prayer, God. And anything that we forgot to ask for, we pray that the Holy Ghost <laughs> will intercede on our behalf and bring it to our remembrance. But most of all, God, we pray that he will allow you to give us what we need instead of what we want. In Jesus' name, the living Christ, your only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, we pray it in his name and we ask it all. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Love you both. Love you both.